Welcome to Maximum TV, the show that stops the nation with epic interviews, life-improving tips, hot babes, and Lana. And TV's biggest creep, James Curley. Now we have a massive episode of horse racing tonight. We certainly do, Lana. Now when we first started working at Maxim, we both underwent those medicals, and I was going through your questionnaire, and it turns out she's allergic to horses. That's confidential, you can't go through that. Plus I grew out of it when I was 17, so... So you're saying you had your first ride at 17? How's your third testicle going? It's still a daily battle. Here's what's coming up on the show. Iron Man teaches us the art of ironing. We find out if our resident ranger can ride a horse like a jockey. And we meet Israeli princess Bar Raffaele. Okay, while well, Curly's not researching in the vaults or tricking innocent women into getting into cabs with him under the false pretense of a mobile game show, mm. we actually do go through your max and mail. We certainly do. We love hearing from all 55 of our loyal viewers. And this week, the treasures seem to be coming in from the racetrack. It's fashion fails, bad bets and stacks. Like Lana's standard Friday night. Yep. Here's Max and Mail. It's racing season. We all know that means one thing. It's time to get stupidly drunk in a public place and gamble on horse names you simply like the sound of. <laughs> now, guys and girls, we want to warn you on the perils of hitting the juice a little too hard. Yeah, this is a, uh, a very familiar scene from the racing season. <laughs> yeah, you know that nine you met at the bar? She will quickly become a five when you realise that necklace you were admiring was vomit on her soupe dress. That is an awkward lean. Plus, guys, please remember, the race course concrete is not a bed. No, it is not. That suit jacket and jeans you thought looked great at 10.30 this morning now paint you as a deadbeat hipster who simply can't stay awake in broad daylight. A dipster, actually. Now, this next guy, I know for certain, did not clean up on the punt. It looks like he's trying to finish himself in pole position. That's disgusting. Ketamine is traditionally used for horses, but... But some girls do get it right at the races. Good to see the strip clubs still have fun Christmas parties. Hey, is that bewitched? And yes, seven jockeys were sacrificed to create these satin heavy fashion crimes. Now if you're having no luck on the horses or with the ladies... You may as well back yourself as much as this guy did. Take a look at your screen here on the near side of your picture as the spectator starts racing the horses. You I just can't do that. He's actually but joined in, hasn't he? Just don't expect it, really. You don't expect someone to get out onto the, onto the track, to be honest. <laughs> Look at him go. That is incredible. Good luck, fellas. Enjoy your days at the track and don't go too hard too soon. That's it for Max and Mail. Now, Max and Top 100 issue is out right now with 100 of the hottest babes in the country in one sweet magazine. They always manage to slide in a few little cheeky ones. There are some cheeky <laughs> ones in there like Andrea Pejic at 98 or Lana Kington at 26. No, I thought I would have made Top 10. Confident. Yeah. <laughs> but here are the Top 10 stunners at Crown this year's Maxim Hot 100. Introducing the hippie. Hello. Maybe we met in a past life. What's your totem? Is this organic? Where you'll meet a yoga studio, the rainforest, beside a wicked camper combi, and at protests. Would you like to meditate together? Have you ever heard of the Digibit people of Southeast Asia? Flow with me? That's great. The pros. She knows the best lookouts, is in touch with her body, doesn't expect material gifts, can interpret your dreams, doesn't like underwear, and is open to multiple partners. May I read your palm? Oh, any warlock in your ancestry? The cons. Poorly maintained body hair, may smell a little, probably vegan, sanctimonious political and social chat, and may take too many hits from the bong. Money purely exists to separate us from our whole Earth space? the dirt. Overall, if you can get over a few superficial hurdles like hairy pits and parts, plus weekly showers, her liberated ways will make for the ride of your life. Here's to peace, love and sexual freedom. Are you vegetarian as well? Do you have dreams? Try some spinach? Oh wow, I would never give up meat to be with a woman. And no woman will ever give up a good sex life to be with you. Most of your friends have. Here's what's still to come on the show. We've got Bar Raffaele. The Bondi hipsters teach you how to pick up chicks. But up next, some insider tips from a book.
Welcome back to Maxim TV. Still to come, we find out if our resident ranger can ride a horse like a jockey. I'd say no. But if there's people that you can't trust in life, it would have to be... Ah, uh, real estate agents. Used car salesmen. Politicians. James Curley. Definitely not. And <laughs> bookies. But we thought we'd take a punt this week and find out if there's any tricks at the track. So we had a chat to a real Australian bookmaker. Yes, Curley got the spring racing scoop to see whether you can actually beat the system. Check it out, I'm here with Johnny Aiken from TomWaterhouse.com, mate. Busy time of year for you, thanks for coming past for a beer. Good to see you, mate. Great stuff. Now, we need some uh, behind-the-scenes gold on how to make some money when it comes to horse racing. What tips you got for us? The difference between a winning client and a losing client is the way they execute their bets. If you like a runner at $2 or you like a runner at $100, I yep. implore you to have the same amount on it. So, equal bets on long and short odds. I think it's important for punters not just to look at the last race, I've been looking at its runs this preparation. Preparation like an ointment that puts it on itself before it uh, races? Preparation is a series of races. The last five runs is probably the best block to look at. I've been told to uh, keep an eye on some hot jockeys. Look at the hot stables, the hot trainers. I've got a hot jockey calendar, which uh, is just 12 of the hottest jockeys around. I'm going to throw that out. Have all of your bets before you go to the track. Taking away that element of risk when you're at the track, you've had a few beers, and that's when you can get yourself into trouble. We checked out some pictures earlier on. You don't want to be betting in that state. Well, let's cut to the chase, mate. Here's a little something for you. What's some stuff that Tom doesn't want you to tell us? Well, I think the greatest tip I can give, and this actually comes from his grandpa, Bill, who's been bookmaking for over 80 years. Yep. Is that if you ever see a race where there's two horses priced under $3, you always want to be on the horse. That's the longer price. Choose the one that's paying, say, $2.50, not the one that's paying $1.50. More often than not, he's spot on. Any races coming up, we can maybe uh, drop that 50 on and make some money together. There's a horse coming through called Chautauqua. On Saturday, it's in a race called the Dali Sprint, and I think it'll win. A watermelon Liqua, Shallow Liqua, what's the name? The... Chautauqua. Chautauqua, <laughs> Saturday, get on it. All right, Johnny, thanks so much. I'm going to make some cash and take you out for another beer. Perfect. As a child, Garfield would sometimes sit on his rocking horse mm. and dream of winning the Melbourne Cup. But one day, that rocking horse shattered under the weight of his growing frame, and that dream was lost forever. So this week we thought we'd take Garfield out to the track and see whether that dream was still in reach. In reach of his chubby little chipolata fingers. This is Maxim Fitness. Hi, I'm Sam Clipperton. I'm a jockey and we're here at Royal Randwick to teach Garfield how to prepare for a race day. A little bit worried about this one. Haven't ridden a horse since I was 13, so I hope I go okay. We'll be right. This sport can't be that hard because the horse is doing most of the hard work for you, right? Oh, not necessarily. Uh, you know, we're controlling a 500 kilo racehorse that's uh, trying to run its fastest. So there's a lot of fitness involved and a lot of hard work. You know, you've got to get up and ride track work every morning from 4 till 7 in the morning. You've got to be very strict with your diet. You can't be going out partying. <laughs> what, what uh, mate? You've got the wrong profession here. Yeah, this sounds uh, terrible. Let's uh, go and show you some of the uh, pre-race stretches. Let's do it. Pretty basic, you know, just the old uh, leg stretches. Shoulder swings. It's important to be nice and loose and warm when we go out. So we're in the jockey's room. Is there a lot of heckling between the competitors in here? Yeah, they can be. It can get pretty heated in the room here at times. So it's very psychological. Yeah, definitely. So if I want to get into the headspace of it and I started paying you out, and I was like, yo, get out of here, you speckly little midget. Then what would you say? I'd be like, yeah, right, oh, you big blood face. Whatever, you cheeky 12 year old. Yeah, all right, you plum ranger. Go back to your singing career in One Direction. I've earned more money today than you have in your lifetime, you fat blood nut. <laughs> Heckling aside, Garfield, it is important to remain focused throughout the day, and uh, I'll show you how to do that. Cool, let's do it, you little man child. Let's go, you fat prick. If you need a bit of time to yourself, the uh, male quiet rooms are always a good place to go. Oh, great, I uh, reckon I can just about do that. I'll, uh, I'll be back. I mate, I'm feeling a lot lighter now, so should I weigh myself, or...? Uh, sorry Garfield, this one only goes to 90, mate. Huh. Ooh. What, not alright? I don't think you're cut out to be a jockey, but I think I can still teach you a bit about racing. Well, let's do it. Let's go. So Garfield, we're here in the mounting yard, and this is where we mount up. What does that mean? All fours, thanks mate. <laughs> alright. Righto Garfield, let's get you saddled. You'll be racing under the name of uh, Red Terror today. You'll probably start at big odds and you'll probably benefit from your run. <laughs> get it a race. Oh Jesus! Let's go, okay, come on. Okay. Occupied. Now usually we save the reviews for the end of the show, but I'm simply far too excited about this excellent gift for men to not bring up motivation right now. Are you actually plugging your own shit on our show? This is a legitimate review, Lance. An honest, upfront review, yeah? Shall we?
Motivation is a follow-up to James Curley's amazing book, The Man Plan, which is a keep your shit together guide full of expert advice and dick jokes. Motivation features 20 man-sized cards with a wooden block that you can double as postcards for any dude of any age and any IQ. Can I get some of them to re-gift? That's what the cash is for. You can pick up a Brotivation and the Man Plan nationally at Surf, Dive and Skis for 20 bucks each. I rated three shit cupcakes out of five. If you want to score yourself a copy of a Brotivation plus the Man Plan, well, send us your best dick joke to maxim at maxim.com.au. Still to come on Maxim TV. Iron Man teaches us the art of ironing. We've got the Bondi hipsters picking up girls. And this mega babe. That's all still to come on Maxim TV. Welcome back to Maxim TV's racing special. Now, when it comes to going to the races, you want to get suited up and impress the ladies. So what are the major turn-offs we have to look out for as dudes? Bad dental hygiene. Okay. Being uncontrollably drunk. Yep. Poorly ironed shirts. Ah, well, luckily, Iron Man can help us out with the last, if not the first two. How's your teeth today? Gums are still, still bleeding. Oh, so bad. I'm an Iron Man. The Jackie Chan of dry cleaning. Look at me. What? Check it out, we're here with Iron Man, the master of dry cleaning. Today I'm going to show you how to iron the shirt. Awesome, how to iron a shirt. Nothing worse than a crinkly shirt. I brought a couple from home that need it, need it once over. This is one of eight shirts I brought in for uh, Iron Man just to teach me, so I really know how to, uh, how to iron. Kelly just wants all of his shirts done today, I think. <laughs> Jim. Jim is my friend. Yeah. Jim is my good friend. I'm going to make it look nice. I'm going to iron the shoulder first. The corner and the right arm. Get out those ledges. Yeah. Please move. Whoa. Have a look at Whoa. Whoa. I don't know if this thing is going to fit in your apartment, Curly. You can do uh, hand ironing like this. So you can use the hand iron there if you don't have a fancy machine at home. Polyester is very easy for iron. Right, so if you're a bit lazy on, on the ironing, polyester is the easiest. This by polyester. What's the hardest? Linen. Don't do linen. Throw out your linen. Fix on the cream box. That is looking pretty sharp. And steam iron it, mixing a little oh. bit. Whoa. <laughs> My eye! <laughs> Kidding. Not gonna see it again. Ready to wear beautiful. I can finish in one minute. You do one minute? Oh. One minute. Are we talking about ironing or something else? But no. yeah. I hope we're talking about ironing. <laughs> On my secret. <laughs> We're putting him out of business. <laughs> Thank you. Now, in the media world, it's not what you know, it's definitely who you know. Mm. Sometimes that's not even enough. This is true. Triple M radio legend Gus Warland, of course, got his start by being best friends with Hugh Jackman, but right now the ex-fat man is doing something pretty cool and taking on the New York Marathon. Wait, so you stopped him mid-training to throw mm. a beer down his throat? Pretty much. Wolverine would not be happy about that. Oh dear. Here's Curly's beer with Gus Wallen. Check it out, I'm here with Gus Wallen, marathon man and beer drinker. Thanks for uh, having a beer with us, mate. Good to have you here, mate. Cheers, cheers. Cheers, thank you, I've been waiting. What are you drinking at the moment? What's your drink of choice in training? Well, I've been told that vodka. Dead set. It's so much lower in calories, and especially if you don't have a mixer with it. Yeah. So just straight vodka. Knock back as much as you can, then pop the lid back on, back into the freezer. That's enough to sort of get me going. Yeah. And the calories are low. Just have a weekday morning, Gus. Do you well, I'm normally up for the Triple M about 3.30, so I normally have a cup of tea and then that a little shot <laughs> just before I get in the car. <laughs> yeah. What about uh, after a big night, uh, late night snacks? Got one of the great rorts of all time when you get cab charges at Triple M. Get in a hire car and stay to the boat, mate, just slap 50 bucks on it, get stuck through Maccas. Big Mac, three cheeseburgers. I love Maccas, I love pizza. I love, just love all the stuff that everyone loves, you know? And yeah. Really, when you're eating, when you're drunk, as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's, not, it's free calories. Once yeah. you're hammered, Yes. That's how I used to feel. You've given up. You've, whatever. Anything it's, gone. Goes. it's a bad day. You can't make it any worse. Just rip and tear, start again. Gus Wall and Marathon Man, of course, kicked off tonight, 7.30 p.m. on A&E. Mate, uh, a great show to check out, just for Max and TV. Why'd you do it? Why'd you say I want to do a marathon? What's, well, what's the um, cause? Without sort of name dropping too much, mate, I went to kindergarten with you, Jackman. Yeah. And we've been best mates. He was my best man. I was his best man. Mm. We were pissed together at the Boxing Day test. Got on the drink, we ended up going to a nightclub and a restaurant afterwards. The next morning, Jacko said to me, he said, look, we had a great night. That to me was a cheat day. Looks like you're having more you're, cheat days than you're not. You're having a cheat life. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. And I said, as best mates say, I told him, you know what, and you know, yeah. blah, blah, blah. So I started thinking about it and then I 
rang him and he said, look, sorry if I was a bit harsh. I said, no, you're absolutely right. As best mates do, blah, blah, yeah, blah. In the end, I said, perhaps we could do a show around that. We might be able to get a few other Aussie blokes. Yeah. I'm not perfect. I'm still having a beer. I found myself at 142.3, which is when I started. Yeah. Now I'm sitting around about 110. The difference is quite immense if you 30 kilos is 20 or 30 kilos you've dropped yeah. yeah I had a target to hit 95 I'm not gonna I'm gonna miss that by 15 kilograms right yeah this show but is still. all about the failure as much as the victory it's gonna be tough but that's what this show is all about is about the wins and the losses yeah. and raw and uh, raw and real which is yeah. great yeah cool. Gus Wallen Marathon Man it's on a and 7 30 p.m. Thursdays just before Maxim Sculling beautiful mate now, when it comes to the world of romance, we ask the big questions on Max and TV. Oh, only the biggest ones here, but this week we decided to try and find out when hooking up and booty calls turns into a serious relationship. We hit the streets and this is what the survey said. This week we are talking about relationships. Con, how do you know when something becomes a relationship? So you're hooking up with someone, you're going on dates, when does it become official? When she never star stops giving calls to you. Ooh. When it starts getting a bit harder. <laughs> when it starts becoming hard work? You, you never know, no? You never really know? You never know. What is love? I think when you start calling each other baby. Baby? Baby, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's the indicator. <laughs> I think so. So if a girl starts calling you baby, you know it's, it's game on. I think so, definitely. Now, how do you know when, you know, hanging out, hookups and stuff turns into a serious thing? When you don't want to see anyone else or being with anyone else. I yeah. think you have the conversation we're official, you yeah. know, or the exclusive chat. I think yeah. before, if you haven't had that chat, then it's not happening. Yeah, I don't really like being asked the question. I think that's a bit, you know, kind of childish, but I don't know. You get the right terminology and say, I want to be your boyfriend or girlfriend. Have you guys had that chat yet, Nick? Um, no. <laughs> not yet, not yet. Well, unfortunately, these days it would probably be Facebook, man. How do you know when you, you go from kissing someone to it being a boyfriend and girlfriend situation? What's the, what's the measure? How do you know? What's the rules? Oh, the vibes. The vibes? <laughs> it's about the vibe. Oh, they're looking all right. When they don't leave you alone. Um, I think it's more a feeling. I think you just know. When, when they start leaving stuff at your house. Like That's a lady trick. Stuff, That's yeah. a lady trick, yeah. They're like, oh, I, I forget. No, I've got to come back and pick it up. Like, no, you don't. Yeah. Take the stuff with you. I feel like it's when you, you stop wearing makeup in front of them. I, yeah, that's probably a big <laughs> So much truth there. Still to come on the show. We've got the Bondi hipsters picking up girls. Lana reviews a few things. And we meet Israeli princess Bar Raffaele. That's all up next on Maxim TV. With summer just around the corner, it's a good time to start smashing the gym rather than smashing pies and beers at every opportunity. So musclemealsdirect.com.au have a great deal for you guys. So check out their website. Here it is. If you want delicious, fresh, pre-prepared meals delivered to you every week, check these guys out. They're all made by professional chefs and vacuum sealed to keep them fresh. And just for the Maxim TV loving legends, get $30 off your first order with discount code MAXIMMUSCLE. That is Muscle Meals, as easy as ordering a pizza without tubbing up. No dishes to clean. Do I bicep stick bigger? Maybe give it a few more weeks. Now, something they don't teach you at school is how to pick up chicks. Especially if you're homeschooled like myself. Which is why we milk each guest for their girl grabbing tips. We certainly do, and this week was a bit of a special guest with the internet's Bondi hipsters coming through. They've also got a new show on the ABC at the moment called Soulmates, but they gave us their top tips of love, which may even work outside Bondi. Hi, this is Dom and Eads, and here are five tips for picking up chicks. Um, I've found that the most important thing when you meet a girl that you want to be with um, is to make it feel like that meeting is destiny. So um, you want to say the sorts of things that are going to make them feel like that. Like, it's amazing that we've crossed paths in this pivotal moment in my life. Um, those kinds of things tend to work well. I mean, or you could just uh, be present in the conversation. Uh, and express interest in her. You could tell her that you've got a um, sick job and that you make lots of money. Or you, yeah, or, or you could just just be a genuinely nice person. You could um, uh, click like on lots of feminist articles and share lots of feminist articles and then when you sit down with her, be like, hey, it's pretty fucked what's happening to women at the moment. You, you're better than that. Or you could go for like, you know, a swim or something, or go for a walk the next day, find common interest through doing something. 
like that. I mean, I'm just saying. Yeah, there's five. It must be so hard to be a woman in 2014. Yeah. It's time for reviews. Let's get stuck into this. What's out on DVD, Lance? We've got 22 Jump Street. Now, when Channing Tatum and Jonah Hill team up to reboot the 80s classic, expect less moral lessons and a hell of a lot more belly laughs. As undercover cops infiltrating a high school drug ring, they're back and taking on university life in the ingeniously titled 22 Jump Street. Ooh, Dreamy Depp even makes an appearance. Oh dear, we're giving 22 Jump Street four out of five teen heartthrob Johnny Depp lunchboxes. Moving on though, grow me over some new tunes. <laughs> Attention rockers, the Fooies are back and they're promoting their 20th anniversary with their brand new album, Sonic Highways. With eight songs recorded in eight cities and inspired by America's greatest musicians, the Foo Fighters' eighth album is paired with a documentary series directed by Dave Grohl himself. And even better news, the boys will be here on tour early next year. Great news, we're giving Sonic Highways eight eights out of 10. Moving on though, a woman who's had a massive career. Yes, Katy Perry, now get your foam shooting bikinis ready because she is coming to town. Yes, Pop's queen of naughty but nice is touring Oz on her prismatic tour, performing all of her greatest hits and all of her weirdest outfits. The gigs kick off tomorrow night in Perth, followed by Adelaide, Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne. We are giving Katy Perry's Prismatic to a four boob cannons out of five. That's it for the reviews. Let's have a little walk down memory lane. Well, it's your favourite part of the show, Curls, The Vault. And this week we've got Bar Raffaele. She's a mega babe. We've got the Hilltop Hoods on next week's show. We'll see you then. See ya.